<laughs> Moving next, Charlie Preston. Mm. Beat up on him. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> for, um, for those at home, the reason I'm coming to talk to you is about Article 38. And I'm kind of puzzled by this article, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of puzzled by the selectman's recommendation. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know if I could ask the manager through the chair or if any of the selectmen know. How, what is the square footage that we'd be voting to discontinue? The article says we're voting to discontinue E Street. And I didn't know if anybody had any idea of the square footage of the area we're talking. Would you like to address that? I, I haven't measured it, but it would be exactly the same as D Street and F Street. Okay. They're, they're all the same length and all the same width. Well, on, on the width, I just, for ball, you know, to guess, I, I measured um, D Street, which is the north end of the casino, and it was 28 feet curb to curb. And I mentioned, uh, I measured F Street, which was 24 feet curb to curb. Depends so, on how wide the sidewalks are, and et cetera. I, I, I agree that could be a possibility, Fred. Um, I believe they're 30 foot right of ways. Okay. Is what they are. So then we then we could assume that the E Street is right around 30 foot. That's, I think, a pretty safe assumption. And roughly yeah. 500 feet, so we're talking, yeah. say, at least 15,000 yep. square feet of, of area. Just, just to give people uh, some, you know, a comparison of sorts. The Clues family, which I thought was very generous, to the Hampton Beach Village District, sold their property down there. I think it came out to be about sixteen thousand square feet. So it's we're in, we're in the ballpark, yeah. And they sold that the village, Hampton Beach Village District taxpayers paid the Clues family one million. And when I say the Clues family was generous, they sold that for the assessed value of the property. At the deliberative session on January 30th, as the manager stated, in doing our research of these streets, we discovered in 1899, the Hampton Beach Improvement Company deeded over the casino right and title to land except E Street. He stated E Street does exist and we own it. The manager stated, giving this, Passing Article 38 would eliminate a problem. Personally, I don't see a problem, but I see more of an opportunity. Because with the update of the transportation section of the master plan to the tune of 375000 that's going on now, is not the time to turn over any asset of the town of Hampton that could help relieve transportation and parking issues. To date, Upwards of 100,000 has been spent by VHB of that 375,000 overseen by DOT based on two way traffic on Ashworth Ave. After spending since last spring, I'm not sure exactly how many months, they met with police, fire, and public works about two weeks ago after spending six or eight months on it. And while I can't speak for them, I believe they, they agree two way traffic won't work in season. I look at that 100,000 of that 375 as a waste. And I, when I say upwards, I don't have an exact number. I'm, Mr. Nye is working to see if I can get that soon. I firmly believe an entrance to the casino property would help our goals and also benefit the casino properties. For people to be able to access the Hampton Beach Village District, the town of Hampton, and the casino parking lots without driving on Ocean Boulevard or Ashworth Ave is an absolute no-brainer to me. But at the very least, we ought to get the opinions of traffic engineers. I'm, I'm only a layman. The situation has existed for 118 years, and we should not be in a rush to discontinue East Street. The possibilities are endless. Less traffic, bus stop areas, public safety access, the police and fire, the fire department wouldn't have to go northbound on a southbound street. 
pedestrian vehicle conflict. I hope after further review, the Board of Selectmen would change their minds with respect to the recommendation of this Article 138. I realize that stuff's gone to the warrant and it'll come out as that, but in the meantime, before the election, you could say, you know, after further review, maybe we should wait, put this off for another year and make work for, work for the town of Hampton. Let's not give it an asset of Hampton without working to compromise, access, egress, traffic easement, the traffic easements that could be made to, to be enforced during events at the beach. In October 9th, 2012, enhancement not change by Kyle Stuker, who was posted on the Hampton Northampton patch. I believe the owner, the majority owner of the casino properties, Mr. Lupoli, Lupoli was, was quoted in there, and you, you can look that up. But in this article, there's an aerial view. It's a great picture. It shows the new bandstand, it's taken from over the water. It has the casino, encompasses the casino, the casino parking lot, Brown Ave, the police station, and fire station. If you look at this, you can actually see everything and the possibilities. In the video, Mr. Lupoli also states there'll be plenty of opportunity to listen to the people that are stakeholders and are from the community. The Hampton Beach Area Commission has tried numerous times to get Mr. Lupoli with the HBC, and I don't know if this has ever happened. I know Mr. Nyan has tried many times and hadn't had much success. But let's say no to 38, at least this year. It's been 118, we can wait another one. And get all the parties to the table before we give up any asset or leverage. In today's world, planning boards do have some say with respect to assets and egress to <coughs> properties. I'm not quite sure how this came up, but let's not give it out without working the best deal we can get for Hampton taxpayers and visitors of our town. We can make this work for both sides if we work together. While many say the casino is the heart of Hampton Beach, I say the intersection of Brown Ave and East Street and Ashworth can truly be the hub of Hampton Beach. Please join me and vote no on Article 38, March 8th. I'd also like to say, if anybody has any questions or if they'd like to know, I've gone before the, I spoke at the deliberative session, I spoke at the Hampton Beach Village District. The chairman was gracious enough to let me speak tonight, get on the agenda. I was supposed to be two weeks ago. You know, we lost, we lost my mom, and uh, so Christina was gracious enough to reschedule for a couple of weeks, and I'm going to meet with the HPAC. Their meeting Thursday has been now changed to March 1st. So I'm hitting everybody, and if, and if anybody at home would like to know how to view those means, I can get you right to them very quick, and you can see, you know, very short what you need to see. Feel free to call me, because I agree with what you said, Rusty. People, you know, need to do their homework, be an educated, be an educated voter, and uh, everybody should keep an open mind, but this is something that should be voted down. And a year from now, after we get sit down with VHB, the HBAC, Casino Projects, because I think we can make this work for everybody. If I own that property, I would more than welcome that entranceway coming in there. I'd have buses coming right to my door. And I think this is something we can make work for everybody. And I'd like to tell anybody, please feel free to call me if they need any explanation or different opinion. And my phone number is 603-235-6118. Two three five six one one eight. Feel free to call me if you guys have any questions on whatever you like. Mr. Waddell. Fred, could you explain uh, the reasoning behind in the town? We have taken on a project over the last few years of trying to identify all the town roads that are customarily maintained by the town or built by the town or built by the Hampton Beach Improvement Company, which is part of the town, founded by the town. Um, we set the beach area, the South South Beach area, uh, as a goal this year to try to get those streets accepted so they would be legal public ways, public highways. Uh, and they're not on the books as legal public highways, they're just there. They are in town property. 
in researching that, and uh, Charlie's right, this goes back to 1898, 1899, it's almost 120 years ago. Um, we looked up the original plans for all those streets, and we found them in the Registry of Deeds. We then looked at the, um, the deeds that were issued by the Hampton Beach Improvement Company on behalf of the town to, to in fact, develop that area. And what we found was that, with regards to the casino property, that they were deeded the south side of D Street, every lot, all the way from Ashworth Avenue up to Ocean Boulevard. They were deeded the frontage from D to E. They were deeded the north side of E Street to Ashworth Avenue. And they were deeded the south side of E Street from Ashworth Avenue to Ocean Boulevard. And then the frontage along Ocean Boulevard to F Street and down the south side of, or the north side of F Street. They were not deeded E Street. It's pretty obvious in, in the deeds. We went through and checked every lot. E Street was not a lot. However, they've been paying taxes on it for almost 120 years. They've developed it. Um, it wouldn't be very kosher as far as a business community is concerned to say, okay, you don't own that anymore. Uh, and if the town votes that, then I'm forced into a position under the law of not being allowed they can't be allowed to have any building permits, electrical permits, uh, plumbing permits. They can't do any work on that property. They can't occupy it without coming to the selectmen and getting, um, you have to vote leases for the people that would be in that building because it's at least it's on your property. They would have to pay you to have it on your property. Um, that's a pretty high hurdle. And if you want to connect that to Ocean Boulevard, you're just going to have to cut 30 or 40 feet right off the casino, right through the middle of it, to get access to Ocean Boulevard. Because you can't have it both ways. There are, there's no air rights in the statutes. You can't build on top of that right away. It's just not there. You have to go to the legislature, get special permission to do that. Um, for all intents and purposes, the town has gone along for 120 years and allowed them to use that property. Uh, they need to have a vote to determine whether or not the town is actually going to abandon it and give it to them for the taxes they paid for 120 years and for the investment they've made in the building, which is over the top of that. Uh, if the town says no, it's very clear uh, that, in fact, nothing can happen on that property until the town does something again, somehow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Charlie, I've listened to what you've said, listened to what Fred says, and I've got to think. But I understand your point. I understand Fred's point. How does it go uh, when you hear, and I can remember um, that there's been areas where people have been mowing um, the lawn and taking care of it, and all of a sudden the land reverts to the people that were mowing and maintaining the land. There were some cases of this along Exeter Road. Only if the town consents to it. There was... It, New Hampshire, unlike New Hampshire, has an, has a law. We don't have a land court. If you occupy municipal property, you can't squat on it and claim it. The town has to give it up to you. So you can never acquire property by adverse possession. It's not legal in New Hampshire. So you either have to give the property up, or you have to exert your right to it and kick the people off that are currently occupying it. The town needs to make its mind up one way or the other in order to accomplish and move forward to clarify the situation. Now, we unfortunately only get the opportunity to do this once a year. I know that Mr. Napoli is, is um, thinking about developing that property, and he has, and I've talked to him, and that's one of the things he wants to do is put an intersection there, and I think the planning board wants to have an intersection there at Ashworth Avenue off of his property, and they want it traffic controlled. Um, but I would have to tell you that if I was Mr. Poli and, and someone came to me and said, no, sorry, you can't use that property anymore, you have to stay off it because it's town property, and that's the law, until a town meeting makes a further vote, I wouldn't do that at all. And people from Massachusetts probably wouldn't because that's not the way they do business. And knowing Sal the way I do, uh, I think he'd probably give us anything we want. But to take the property this way is probably not something that's very friendly from a business standpoint. So when I look at it, 
give the town an opportunity to vote to see what they want to do. Uh, 118 years worth of paid taxes on the property is a lot of money, not to mention the investment he's made. And it's a lot more than we would get if we sold him the road at the prices that were quoted. We're talking millions and millions of dollars investment there in taxes and property. It just doesn't make a lot of sense if you're going to be a business-friendly community. That's the basis upon which we put the article in. I think that's the basis upon which the town has to make a decision. If, if your house, for instance, were accidentally on town property and the town came along and said, sorry, Charlie, we're tearing it down, you've got to go. It's our house. That wouldn't be fair. You're doing the same thing here, basically. You're taking away someone's vested right that they've paid for for over 100 years. They can't legally have it unless we give it to them. But in essence, you're, you're taking away their 118-year their investment in one fell swoop. Mr. Bridal. The only part I, I, I understand what Charlie's saying. I understand the importance of having that as a entrance to the casino. I've worked there, down that area for a long time. Um, but E Street, as a street, has never been there. Hmm. The, it's a paper. It's a paper street. It's just like a little street we used to call Rye Court down in Surfside Park. That was never there, and now there's a house right where it was. Um, but they have been paying taxes on it for 118 years. They have made improvements to that piece of property. Uh, that street was never put in, and for the past 118 years, there's never been any intent for that street to be put in there. And I think that uh, to tell, tell the, the, that property now that they can't use that and they can't do anything to it and hinder any uh, future development of that until it's approved by the town, I think the town, to move forward, we need to go ahead with this vote and, and clear that up. I, I hear what Charlie's saying. I'm also sure that the property owner hears what Charlie's saying, what the people are interested in. Um, and as the town manager said, uh, he's, uh, he's talked to uh, the gentleman and he's interested in putting an intersection there, which I think is what we all want to see as far as an entrance to the way, and I agree with you. It would be great to have an entrance there to go into the casino or the fire department or the police department or anybody, but to go into that property so they don't have to go north, northbound in the southbound traffic. So uh, although I can sympathize with you, Charlie, I think it's what we ultimately what we, we should do. And if we, can, if we can have conversation with the property owner to make sure that what you want to see get done, all the better. Mr. Bean. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie, for coming in. And, and always your stewardship and active uh, citizenship. Really appreciate it. Heard what you had to say. Uh, I'm enthusiastic in support of how the board has voted on this and our recommendation at, uh, at the uh, deliberative. And uh, I haven't changed my mind. I won't change my mind. Uh, it uh, um, is what it is. And if we were to uh, pursue uh, any other course of action, um, uh, I think it will be a, a tort nightmare. Uh, as we go forward and ultimately uh, the citizens of this town are the uh, decision makers and it's before them now but uh, I am not ambivalent and I'm not reticent I'm very confident that that is the uh, proper way forward for Hampton and thank you very much thank you sir and so is this something that Mr. Lapoli asked to straighten out before he can do anything there he has a lien against his title there's a defect in it because he's built over someone else's property and yes, he's going to have to straighten it out one way or the other. And it either requires a town vote to give him the property based on what he's done in the past or what the, what the property owners have done in the past, or to take it away. So did he know that when he bought the business? I don't believe knowing? anybody knew it because I don't think anybody has read that deed in 118 years. So how did it all come up? It all came up because we were trying to accept those streets. And as we were doing our due diligence and going through and finding out where the streets were and the deeds associated with them, this cropped up. So there needs to be some effort to correct it in some fashion. Yeah, Charlie? Mr. Chairman, I, I 
I thank you all for your comments. <coughs> I, I, res I respectfully disagree. I did go to the HBAC in October 2012 to ask about this entrance being put in there. I think they approached them. I have no idea if that's how it came up. Yeah, but, but I think he said no, didn't he? I, I don't know. Or didn't answer it. I don't know. He has, he's never come to the HBAC meetings. I know you're on that board, and, and he's been asked over the phone through letters and everything, but, you know, we, one person, you know, Rusty said, that, you know, that it's never been there, but the town manager says it is there, and we own it. I'd like to state this is not a land grab. We're not looking to take the land, the building, or the land, say you can't use it. We're looking at this is property that we own, and we need to take leverage. If Mr. Le if if this article passed, and Mr. Lapoli took property of it, he could do what he wanted, not do anything with us. He could just say he could promise you something, but once this goes, he could do anything. I just think it's something that we should definitely not do. I, I realize, Fred, you say they've paid taxes for 118 years. Well, a few years ago, and this is all public information. I got an abatement on my taxes. The Glade Path, 47 Glade Paths, my address. They had me assessed to 218. It got reduced to 200. The reason it did was they had me listed as a three-bedroom house. I have a bedroom. I let them in. I'll let anybody in. Okay? But I couldn't go back and get any tax money. As I said to him, I said, well, how about all those years that I was taxed a three-bedroom? Doesn't matter. That's gone. That's history. So it, it doesn't just happen to some people. It happened to me, too. And you know what? It's my own fault that I wasn't on top of it to find that my house was listed as a three-bedroom. How they ever got that information? Maybe it was just at a time when you know, they couldn't get into something, and they just measured it and assumed it was a three-bedroom. But that's why I was giving the abatement. The assessor came right in here and said, yeah, Charlie only has a one. I let him in. I let the assessor and his assistant came in. You know, this is an adverse possession. Because obviously it doesn't exist because of a you know municipality New Hampshire law. It's a good thing we got that New Hampshire law in my book. You know, and you know when you're talking about we're taking property, you, know, you can't take your own property. It's ours. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is let's get the man to the table first, because if this passes, you lose all rights. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if if we're if we're ballparking, this is fifteen thousand square feet. The village district just paid a million to close. This isn't about money. This isn't about taking the land. It's our land. You can't take your own land. This is about working the best deal for the town of Hampton taxpayers with respect to public transportation and parking updates. We know we're spending $375,000. As far as I'm concerned, VHB has wasted 100 to date. Okay, we've and heard your comments. Mr. Gerald, do you have anything? Nothing on this one. Thank no. you. Okay, thank you for coming in tonight. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Um, moving on.